It's just a quick note on 11AC. 11AC is a very, very exciting area. We're seeing um, some pretty widespread adoption of 11AC. Our flagship MR34 product, when we first launched it, I think in the first quarter we saw about 10% of our wireless sales were 11AC. But in our most recent quarter that just ended, it was more than a third of our sales. And our projections are showing that 11AC is going to probably be more than half of wireless revenue in 2015. So that's, that's really exciting. It shows that 11AC is here to stay. It shows that there is a compelling need in the market for 11AC. And I think it also, again, speaks to the kind of Meraki moving up market into enterprise, large scale campus distributed enterprise, where you have more high density requirements, you have more higher end application requirements. So 11AC, I think, is here to stay. You're going to see Meraki doing more and more with 11AC, both hardware and software, um, this year. And uh, the Cisco Enterprise side of the house uh, obviously has some really exciting things to talk about. So I'm going to hand it over to Mark Denny. Uh, give you a quick update on uh, how things have been going transition-wise, trend-wise with our products, and then we're going to have some, uh, some really interesting sessions with a couple of our key engineers in the RF space out of Ohio. So uh, they've come in and they're excited to be able to talk and engage with you guys as well as the TME team. So from our side, just looking at the whole Cisco on Cisco portfolio, we're, I'm going I'm to talk specifically about some of the trends we're seeing with the module 2700 and 3700. So we've been shipping 11AC for about a year now. Uh, when we first started and introduced the 11AC module for 3600, followed that on with the 3700 and the 2700. And uh, this gives you a running, um, this is actually based on our units over the last 12 months and gives you a percentage breakdown of the growth of 11AC and the shift of 11 a to 11AC as a base product, as a key element of the product. So, so running 12 months, uh, you'll note that this is our fiscal 12 months. So this is the past year from a business perspective. And you'll just see how it started out. July, going back to, this would be August. We started shipping the module just a month before. Definitely some interest. If you, you know, given our type of volumes, you'll note 4% is, is still a pretty good size number. And then a trend that you just see carrying right on through. And on the, the last few months, especially, where we see a massive shift to more than 50% of the product going out were 11AC main product on that part. So right now we're... Uh, over the past, this will give you a breakdown as well from a market perspective. I've kind of showed some of this data at different events before, Cisco Live and different conversations where one of the things that was, uh, was very inter interesting to see day one was the fact that when it comes to 11AC, we definitely have a few markets that are extremely active and aggressive on the technology, education being one of them immediately, but we've seen a lot of interest across the board, even from the service provider market space, which is still showing as 5% of overall units. However, it's, uh, it's an environment that was very, very aggressive. Our first production rollout, 11AC, was actually a service provider in the, in the Asia-Pac area. They've been really aggressive to do testing and wanting to differentiate themselves on service offerings. Now, the, the trend is different within the, uh, the so-called enterprise customers that we have where it really varies based on their needs. Some of it's all bandwidth driven, which is education market typically. Uh, other environments, it could be new ads where, you know, based on the product offerings that we've had, we transition to the next generation. 11AC based access points at a similar price point, it's an easy decision for customers to make that migration and move. So definitely some of it's in that area. A lot of bandwidth, a lot of high density discussions, uh, somewhat today and planning for the future growth that are coming down depending on the market. But this gives you an interesting spread, um, you know, government healthcare, some healthy growth in there as well, manufacturing, a lot of different types of markets with a lot of different needs and uh, requirements as it pertains to their user base, their consumers, their, their back end front office type of uh, applications. So good, good growth for 11AC across the board. Um, and then, you know, from a market perspective, we're, uh, you know, we're at a point where we're now very much focused on wave two that's coming down. Some of the things you're going to hear today, you're going to hear about multi-user MIMO, which is certainly a key and interesting element to what we're anticipating with wave two or release two or phase two of 11AC technology, all based on the same standard. Today, all the products that we're ship shipping are wave one based. Uh, but like I said, planning for 11AC wave two. And then I think timing wise, you know, we've been articulating second half of calendar 15. And I think that uh, we're still, that's still our goal and tracking. I think there's gonna be a lot of interesting 
dynamics in the market space as it plays out, much like wave one, when do the clients start hitting? Uh, they'll def we anticipate some early client drops, just like with wave one, you know, some USB type products, maybe some lower end consumer home type of products with early chip drops. In fact, I think you know, the D-Link guys have already made some noise with, with uh, Quantena around multi-user capability. Uh, so, you know, there's definitely, we expect that same trend that we saw with wave one, with wave two, and the mainstream coming more in line with probably early 16 as products start rolling in, uh, next, uh, the next generation client chipset vendors as they roll their product in and, and then their clients and customers adopt it into the technology, it'll be, uh, it'll be a growing slow roll, but, uh, but we, that's kind of the same trend that we've seen with wave one. To that point, you know, we know early adopters of wave one were handsets where they integrated 11AC wave one. Um, the Samsung S4 was the first one, HTC. Then we've got the MacBook Air and the MacBook Pro Retinas with integrated 11AC. Now in the last couple of months, we've seen a real surge in 7260 chipsets from Intel in the, in the client side. Uh, you know, as corporates lease plans start refreshing, and bringing in the newer technology, we're definitely seeing a range of, uh, whether it's Dell, Lenovo, Sony's, these types of uh, um, uh, laptops that have integrated the 7260 from Intel, which is their two by two 11AC uh, technology. And then more, most recently, certainly the Galaxies from Samsung, the brand new ones coming out with the Broadcom based uh, 11AC technology, and that's gl globally being offered from a tablet. They're really the first global tablet guy to hit the market, which is, uh, which is great as well. So hopefully we'll see Apple uh, integrate 11AC in forthcoming months on technology and the whole thing will keep going. Um, and then from- Quick question for you sure. before you yeah, sure. move off Absolutely. of that. I'm always curious how the uh, modules are doing. Um, yeah, okay. How do they, you know, in general, how are they received? Um, from a module perspective, so I'd say that overall, um, We've got, a, you know, we're saying around 850,000 units of 11AC in general. I'd say around 140,000 of that is, is the module side of things. So it's been actually well received. Um, a lot of customers putting them back into 3600s, uh, you know, in that, in that sense, not necessarily just new sales with 36s and the modules going at the same time, but being able to retrofit them back in. But it's been re very well received. Uh, likewise, we've got a security and monitoring module that in itself is doing very well, as, uh, and that was our first module that we hit that's uh, nothing to do with 11AC, but does WIPs and clean air functionality on all the channels on 2, 4, and 5. So the module has been really well received, nice retroactive, really great as far as the whole return on investment for your 3600. And then going forward, same story with the 3700 as it pertains to not wave one, but wave two. We've already publicly announced that we will have you know, wave two support in that, uh, that access point as a, from a module perspective. So you can uh, look forward to that as well going forward. And then of course, we'll have wave two based AP. So it'll be the customer's choice and ability to go either way on that part. Um, as it pertains. So the, the other thing I was going to say is that, like I said, we've got tremendous growth in the 11AC. We saw the trends where we're seeing a month by month growth, uh, definitely trending that way. There's a lot of interest and that's only growing. <clears throat> and, you know, we are closing in on a million units of 11AC product, uh, which we should see in the next few months. So, so uh, overall, tremendous uh, interest and in, in movement on that part. So thanks. That's